three very important blood tests that we as doctors feel are underutilized based on our experience as doctors. We are going to discuss these with you in this video. Peter, would you like to go first? Of course, I have three letters, C. CRP. So CRP is really a measure of inflammation, and it's just such an important biomarker that I just feel whenever I see patients, especially in my office, as a new consult when they're sent to me to evaluate them, that CRP levels have not been checked. So why do I care about CRP levels? CRP levels are a measure of inflammation in the body, and what I really drive into people is that heart disease is an inflammatory process. And we know that for a number of reasons. We know that based on the fact that people who have poor oral hygiene have higher levels of bacteria and have higher risks of heart disease as a result of the bacteria getting to their bloodstream and inflammation. We do know that inflammation in the body causes ruptures of plaques in the arteries, which can cause heart attacks. It's almost like a volcano effect where plaques rupture because of their inflamed. Inflammation causes what we call oxidization of bad cholesterol. So it makes the cholesterol, which is bad to begin with, but then also makes it even worse. And it makes it really more atherogenic, which means that it's able to really get into the walls and really like sticky. So I think if anything, for me, CRP levels, you know, because the the big thing with CRP levels is that it is truly just a measure of how you are doing as well with your diet is because refined carbohydrates, all the seed oils we eat, everything like that can raise inflammation in the body. And that just you know, really fuels the amount of inflammation in the body. And so CRP is just a measurement. It's a good way to check in with your body to see how you're doing. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. CRP, we'll list these down below as well. C-reactive protein. I find in my duties as a hospital doctor that this test is also underutilized. So frequently people will come into hospital with overwhelming sepsis, like an infection or another inflammatory disorder. And I will check CRP every day frequently or every other day. And it's really good to measure because it will be sky high. It will be in the hundreds. It should be low single digits, almost negligible. And then as patients get better, it will start to trend down. I find that a really good test. Thank you, Uh, Dr. Peter. All right, Dr. Ben. A blood test that you think is not utilized enough and looked at? Well, the uh, blood test I think that we should talk about a little bit is albumin. Hmm. I think albumin is a very important lab test that we do often get, but it, it isn't acted upon as seriously as it probably should be. Albumin is a protein. It, it can, it's very important if it's low. It can symbolize a number of different things happening. One, it could be your protein status. Your nutrition is not very good. Two, it can be that you have some kind of inflammatory process or you're very sick and your protein is being consumed. Um, But it's very important to look at your albumin level and know what's happening. There's an important thing that can happen if your albumin is very low, this protein is low. It creates something called oncotic pressure, which is it pulls fluid into your vessels and keeps it in your vessels. If it's too low, it tends to leak out of your vessels into your tissues. And what do you start seeing? You start seeing fluid build up in your legs, in your ankles. You start complaining, my legs feel so heavy. It's called edema. And it's a really significant problem. And that's why I think albumin should always be addressed. We should be looking at that and figuring out ways to talk to people and saying, hey, your albumin is low. How are we going to deal with this? What's causing it to be low? Do we need to change your nutrition? Do we need to deal with some condition that's causing it to be low? Because people really suffer when it's when it's very low. I completely agree. That is a, a very good one. It's, ben. So, it's yeah. so true, Ben. It's really like a nutritional marker, right? And so mm. people who are in the hospital who are just in a poor nutritional status with a low protein status is just really like a good sign of how someone is doing. And so it's such an important marker. It is, yeah. And I commonly see it, and it's especially uh, visible, I would say, in people over the age of 65 who are not taking enough protein, and it's a great marker of deterioration. Now, albumin should be well over four. I believe the minimum is 3.5, but it's frequently in the twos. And another bizarre phenomenon that I see in our current uh, modern mainstream environment of insulin resistance is people who are significantly overweight or obese and you will check their albumin and it will be low. And how thought-provoking is that, that somebody who has so many excess calories and fat is actually malnourished? 
because they're not consuming the right types of foods. So Very true. common scenario so that true. I see. So I want to make a yeah. comment about that. <clears throat> I've worked in the hospital multiple times before. And what's really interesting is there are people that, you know, their job is to go around and code and make sure that you're billing appropriately. It's, it's throughout all hospitals. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but they will often approach you in patients like that, obese patients, and say, hey, can you write that they are technically malnourished? And they ask you to write that because technically they qualify and actually they are malnourished because their proteins are incredibly low. It's a fascinating phenomenon. How can you be that obese and yet be malnourished? And it's because of this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, my turn. So the blood test that I don't feel is utilized anywhere nearly enough is a fasting insulin level. I've talked about this before and I'm going to keep on talking about this. Because the medical establishment is woefully undereducated on this. Most doctors out there, and I, I know this because I get feedback, are completely uninterested when patients who are more educated and enlightened ask them for this. But a fasting insulin level is so crucial because basically now we're in a preposterous situation where at least eight out of 10 people, including 50% of adolescents and people in their 20s, are severely insulin resistant. And the problem is that the standard markers that the medical establishment uses, including fasting glucose and HbA1c, are like waiting for water to leak through the Hoover Dam before you take action. So let me back up a little bit. Most of you are familiar with HbA1c and fasting insulin. The medical establishment uses that to diagnose prediabetes and diabetes, but people have been getting sick for 10, 20 years before that happens. And if you get a fasting insulin level at the same time as a fasting glucose, it will enable calculation of the HOMA IR, H O M A IR. And based on that, and you can go online, plug the numbers into a calculator, you want the number to be as close to one as possible. As it gets up towards two, it indicates insulin resistance. As it gets up towards three, four, it's full blown type 2 diabetes. But what I find so fascinating, and I've done this many times over the years, people will come to me who are significantly overweight, which means inflammation, and they'll say, look, my A1C is normal, I'm healthy, and I'm thinking, "Mm, you're not healthy. And I will check their fasting insulin level, and it will be through the roof, and their HOMA IR will be high, which means their body is under extreme stress, insulin resistance, their pancreas is working so hard because having excess body fat is an unnatural state. And the reason why it's so abysmal that the medical establishment doesn't do this test is because you can catch something years before the dam breaks and the HbA1c goes up. And if people are so inclined, they can take action to urgently lower the risk of illness. So that would be the test that I would highly recommend doctors use more, a fasting insulin done at the same time as fasting glucose. I know, Dr. Peter, you have some thoughts as well on insulin resistance and its links with heart disease. It's linked to everything. Absolutely. That's a fascinating marker to check. And I don't think I've ever really seen anyone send a patient to me that had been checked before. And if we can do something to prevent things, like why in, in our healthcare world do we wait for something to happen? As a cardiologist, I always wonder that, like, why am I sent patients before something happened, years before? Why does something have to happen for you to see a, a cardiologist per se. So that's a great example of like why of, of you know, the dam, like the dam's holding up so much. Like why are we waiting for it to leak? Why even let it do that? And so that's a really good marker to check. And we know that insulin and insulin resistance is so tied to heart disease, high blood sugar. And, you know, you talked about why is it not checked often? And is there, is it because there's not a medication out there to treat it? Mm-hmm. Right. And so maybe that's, that drives a lot of the stuff that doctors do that hospitals do because is there any money behind it and i think lifestyle changes is really the key in preventive medicine here it's not medications i think that's such a good point yes exactly i can guarantee you if there was a medication for insulin resistance that the medical establishment would be would all over it yeah absolutely but there isn't the only medication out there which i know that most of you know which is why you're here and which is why we are so happy that you're joining us and we are so rooting for you all to succeed is that you know that the system is a complete sham. You see it every day with yourself and your family. You know that we can do better. You know that the medical profession has utterly 
failed. That does not mean that all doctors are bad. Absolutely not. Lots of doctors out there think like us. But it's sad that our leadership in medicine doesn't think like us. And they are completely tied to big business interests. But back to the point of this video, I'm sure that you've learned a lot. Those three blood tests, which we as doctors think are underutilized, CRP, albumin, and fasting insulin. Thank you so very much for joining us. Do check in the links down below for our separate, unique channel and also our natural health and well-being store, ohiwellness.com if you're in the USA, North America, ohiwellness.co if you're in the UK, Europe. Stay well and we will speak again next time.